the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Kirsty Ferugia from Feels Like Home Professional Organisers. And I'm Amy Ravel from Simply Organised. We can't wait to share with you all our tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home and family organised. If you'd like to engage with the podcast further, you can find us at The Art of Decluttering on Facebook. Let's get started. You've joined us for episode 62 of The Art of Decluttering. Today we'll be talking about decluttering and organising your clothing. Yeah, so good. We did a couple on wardrobes, but I think we needed to deep dive into what it looks like for actual clothing. Like, let's revisit some of that. Let's get back to decluttering clothes because most wardrobes, I would go 98.7% of wardrobes need a good declutter. That was very specific. Oh, I'm specific, baby. If nothing else, <laughs> I'm specific. Attention to detail is your thing? Correct. Not mine. No, mine neither. But <laughs> let's talk about kind of what it looks like to declutter clothing, why people keep clothing, what's going on in our minds, what stories are we telling ourselves, what are the rules around clothing, and what are some ways that we can store clothes to make life so much easier? Yeah, love it. Where do we start? I reckon we start with some rules. Ooh. So, when do you de? How often do you declutter? How often should people declutter? Beautiful listeners, how? When was the last time you decluttered your clothing? Yeah, are no there issues? Are there rules? Not your anything, but clothing. Yeah, I don't think there are rules. No, but here's what I think. I don't think there are rules, but I think some people really function well with rules. Excellent. So I would say if you're someone who likes a bit of guidance, think about it. Six months. Do you want to be that person that... So if you live in far north Queensland, you have one wardrobe. You don't have like the heavy coats versus the lighter coats versus the raincoat versus the fashion coat. You probably just own one coat. For when you come to Melbourne. a whole lot of dresses. (laughs) For when you come to Melbourne. That's right. The coat is only when you come to Melbourne, Sarah. You don't, yeah. I'm speaking from my sister's experience. (laughs) You don't necessarily then need to only declutter once every two years because that's giving you time to cycle through your wardrobe. So it's really about your cycle. If you live in a beautiful sunny area or if you live in Antarctica and you're listening to this podcast. Props to you. Maybe every six months. Because you're, you're having a cycle of the clothing. That's really what I'm getting to is different climates, different conditions, different work habits, different washing habits, different everything creates that cycle. So you've got to find out, is your cycle six months? Is your cycle nine months, 12 months, two years? But if you do like rules, just pick it, put it in your calendar. Declutter the first of winter and the first of summer. Declutter the first every school holidays. Declutter the first of every month. Declutter every year that's not a leap year that's between the lunar sun rotating around Mars. Just pick it and go with it. (laughs) You crack me up. Or here's another one. Declutter any time you bring a new piece of clothing into your wardrobe. I like that. Yeah. It's not as time consuming as the way I was going to suggest we do it. No. It is bringing, when you go out to shops, and because we're recording at financial year end. They've, I am getting bombarded, even though this episode is going to be airing late August. Just remember what it was like at the end of financial year. You were probably similar to me and got absolutely bombarded with advertising, whether it be through your email, whether you decided that that was the time you were going to unsubscribe to everything because <laughs> you felt overwhelmed, whether it was watching TV and you saw all the earfus. Like who, what, who, what, such a silly, silly marketing, really clever marketing. It's annoying. Because it sticks in your brain, which makes it really awesome marketing. Uh, I love smart marketing. Oh, I have no problem with smart marketing. I just wish that nobody ever, ever came up with EFS. End of year financial sale. EFS. Anyway, uh, If you were like me and got bombarded with lots of marketing, lots of advertising telling you to buy, 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 things are on sale, and you did, and you came home with two pairs of jeans, did you get rid of two pairs of jeans? Did you get rid of no pairs of jeans? Did you get rid of three or four pairs of jeans? I would like to suggest that next time you bring an item of clothing into your home, that you go through that category of clothing. 
and see if you could just get rid of one thing. That's a great idea. Breaking it down into categories. I like that. Yeah. Particularly if there was a reason that you bought that item of clothing. Yeah. Not just because it Did was Did you buy new pyjamas because you kept poning on an old pair of pyjamas and they were so threadbare they weren't warm anymore? Yes. It's time to get rid of the old pair once you've got the new pair in. Yes, please do. Don't inflict that upon your partner. If you bought new, bought new undies because you're sick of the old ones having lost their elasticity, don't keep the old ones just in case. Get rid of them. You've got new brand spanking undies to put on and keep it that way. Yeah, and don't think, oh, I might keep it just in case. No, there's a really good reason that you're upgrading. <laughs> really good reason. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that plumber's crack. Do you know what I was tempted with the other day? Oh, tell us, please. Yeah, so this was one of my clothing um, doubts. So mm. I had the doubt, what if I need it? Because I was wearing a pair of long leggings to work. So I wear leggings. You wear leggings to work, don't you too? Yeah, because we're bending down, crouching, getting in all kinds of awkward spaces and we need to be mobile. So I was wearing leggings to work and I got my, so there was plastic crates in a room and as I walked past one, it caught on my pants and ripped a massive hole in my pants, like just above the knee and cut my leg. And I was like, oh, that's really annoying. Those pants are done. So when I took the pants off and I'm like, oh, the cut, the rip's not that bad. And the rest of the leggings are fine. They're comfortable. Maybe I'll put them in a gardening category. And I thought I'll just keep those for like hanging around the house. It's like, that's stupid. They're wrecked. Or fix them. Sew it. Like if you are. Yeah, correct. If you have that talent. Yeah, which I don't. And they, they were they were kind of beyond. Okay. I really needed to just get rid of them. But my mind was going. Maybe. what? Like I really like these pants. What else could I use them for? Could they be like if I was doing a workout at home? Never do workouts at home. I go to places and gym and Pilates. Like, But my brain was going, what if I need it? Yes. Don't throw out those leggings. They could come in use. And if you are tempted to do that, then go to that other category. Yeah. Then the next category is how many painting shirts do I need? Yes. How many gym pants do I need? How many gardening clothes do I need? Exactly. Go and declutter that area. Go, okay, I'm applying the same rule. One in, one out. Do you know what? Ah, light bulb moment. Light bulb moment. So many guys that I work with in their wardrobes have the bedding t-shirts. Like they wear t-shirts to bed. And it basically is anything that's been downgraded from my wife lets me wear that out to my wife says, that thing's got no shape. You need to stop wearing that out. And it goes into the pajama drawer. Yes. And then the guy's pajama drawers have like 15 to 20 old t-shirts. I just That's just a thing. I know. I worked with a client very recently who will remain nameless for the sake of his dentistry <laughs> identity. Not really. He's not a dentist. You know, you know that ad where... Oh, yeah, they show their yeah, back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. you Oral B. It took a long time to or- get I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Oral B, yes. Okay, Oral B. So he will remain nameless and his wife will too because she was complicit in this that can be a bed t-shirt yes wait i realized it with my husband when we went through his wardrobe not for long ago it's like how many t-shirts do you have in here and some of them are not even bed worthy like they're disgusting they've got like man armpit problem things like you know how <laughs> gross yeah. yes sorry know. honey yeah for when you listen to this and think my gosh there's nothing sacred in my marriage no no <laughs> <laughs> you're right cal there is nothing sacred uh, so I had this experience with clients the other day where we, and and it was particularly working with this husband, beautiful man that he is, very, very, very gorgeous hearted person. And he had got a t-shirt, his favorite, favorite t-shirt. Look, everybody has them. It's good. I'm, I'm glad everybody has a favorite t-shirt. It's comfy. You yeah. love it. You probably shouldn't wear it outside the home. It should just be for the home, but it's beloved. Mm -hmm. Went away on holidays. They got massages. The person whose story this is is going to be laughing when she hears this. Um, And they got uh, massages. And the um, masseuse chucked this beloved (gasps) T-shirt over a lamp to create some mood lighting. Oh, dear. The T-shirt... Uh, might have now got a giant burn hole in it 
because this precious man adored this T-shirt so much, it did not go in the bin. Oh, dear. It came home from holidays with them. <laughs> it got washed. It got went to get put away. No. And I rang him on the phone and said, precious man, this is ridiculous. Yeah. No. I I love you, <laughs> but this does not belong in your life. No, that's You fun. need to say thank you for the 20 plus years that you have had this T-shirt and you need to let that T-shirt go, my friend. Yeah. And you've got a cool story to tell too. It even got on a podcast. It did. <laughs> so we were talking about letting go of old manky T-shirts. Yeah. And old manky things that you have downgraded. One of the things I often do when I walk into a client's wardrobe and we're helping them go through their clothes is I say, all right, I'm going to give you like a minute and I want you to grab any clothes that deserve to go straight in the bin. And that's the very first thing that I do because people know what it is. They know that there's a stain on that jumper and that they really shouldn't be wearing it out because they're having to cover it up with a scarf. So doing that kind of rubbish thing is a really great way to start that decluttering. It's just honest. What has to go in the bin? What is not going to even go to the op shop? No. Not even rags. Like, we're chucking this in the bin. Yes. And then we start with the decluttering. Lamp. <laughs> yeah, it needs to go. You <laughs> spilled oil on it while cooking your schnitzel and it's done. Yes. That's a great tip. And then we start decluttering. And just like you said, we go category by category. How many coats do you need? Try them on. Kirsty, I don't know if your clients do this with you. But when um, my staff member Jackie first started working with me, I said, well, just so you know, a lot of clients strip down to their bra and undies when we're doing their wardrobes and try clothes on. And they just, there's no point getting dressed again. They'll just do the session in their bra and undies and try clothes on, dresses on, pants on. And she's like, they don't. I was like, of course they do. Like, that's that's the best way to do it. And they're comfortable to do that. Now she does it. they're comfortable um, to do that. Yeah, lots of them are. They start out thinking there's no way I'm nuding up in front of you. And then they're stripping their clothes off and going, yeah, let's just do the session like this. Now she doesn't even bat an eyelid because it happens all the time. So if you're at home and you're doing the declutter on your own, put on a bra that you're comfortable in and that you would wear normally. Put on some knickers that you feel nice in and actually try stuff on because... If you're trying stuff on and you're wearing like an old maternity bra and you're not going to actually feel good in your clothes. So I say start with a good foundation and then try on your clothes and say, do I love it or not? I don't think there's an in-between. You love it and you feel good in it and you want to wear it or you don't. Yes. I put on a t-shirt the other day and I was like, oh, I've grown into this t-shirt too much. (laughs) This T-shirt shrunk when I was not watching. Yes. <laughs> and it definitely needs to go. So what did you do with it? I actually didn't have time to declutter <laughs> it at the time, but it will be on my list of things to get rid of. But I did buy a new jacket the other day and I thought, this can't go ho- come home with me unless I know that something else is going to go. Awesome. So I justified my purchase (laughs) by getting rid of something else by getting rid of something else and I knew exactly which jacket I was going to get rid of great and went home and it was actually in the wash so I waited for it to be dry and as soon as it came off the line it went straight into our donation box I love that you've got a donation box and that's in your little I'm not going to call I'm going to call it a hutch but it's not in your cupboard as you come in from your garage isn't it yes so it's easy to chuck stuff in there and then easy to grab it when you do an op shop run yes so I love saying to people, if you've got the space in your wardrobe, get a flexi tub and actually sit it in the bottom of your wardrobe for donations. So when you try on something and you go, oh, I always try this top on and I never feel awesome in it and I always take it back off again. Like I hear that a lot. Every time I try that stupid jacket on, it looks good on everybody else. It doesn't look good on me. And then they hang it back up again. Like, what are you hoping will happen? Are you hoping that, like, the jacket fairies will come and adjust it or change the colour or change the colour? Or the body fairies. The body fairies will come. That would be even better than wardrobe fairies. Let's not. No, we won't go down that rabbit hole because it's too hard. So have a flexi tub in your wardrobe that you automatically put those clothes straight in. And then when that's full, take it to the op shop. I know we're talking lots this season. This I'm going to call it a season. When we get into a recording studio yeah. and we 
record, we record like, 16, 16 episodes, episodes it's a season. all in one go. That's going to be our mini season. I like it. This mini season, we have been talking a lot about intentionality. Yes. So I want you to be very thoughtful about when you're buying new clothes. Like we said, are you thinking about what you can let go of when you're purchasing it? But also thinking maybe not just what bringing one in and letting one out, but also buying one less. Oh, I like that. So if you uh, say it's the beginning of the season Mm -hmm. and you're like, right, this is what I need. Uh, You know, I want to upgrade. I want to like change. I want to get some. You need some three quarter pants because it's spring. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or all my undies are ruined. Like they're all, I've realized that they're all elastic going or I look like a grandma in them all or whatever. And you go, right, I'm going to go out and buy seven undies. Maybe go out and just go limit yourself to six undies. Yeah, that's a great idea. Just buy one less because you can always buy more, but you rarely take things back that you have excess of. That's an excellent idea. When you're starting up at a new gym and you want to buy some new leggings, don't buy five pairs, buy three and see if you can keep up with the washing and know that then when your size changes because you're going to the gym and they're too baggy on you or they lose their elasticity, it's much less waste to go and buy a new pair because you only had three, not five. Yes. I really like this concept, Kirst. Oh, I came up with it the other day. I don't think I, like I'm, it. I don't think it's unique to me. Oh, I think I'm, it definitely is. Okay. <laughs> I'm I sure it definitely I've, is. I've read about it somewhere in my travels, but I can't attribute it to anybody. Yeah. So I'm going to claim it. I think you should. Yep. Claim it. So by and I and please, I, Simon will listen to this episode sometime in the future. So know that I am preaching to myself, peeps. Like I'm going to be living this out and working this out because I. Um, learning and growing in this area as well. Our podcast today is sponsored by The Old New. If you love fashion and want designer clothes and shoes for a fraction of the price, I found a great little boutique recycled clothing store in Western Sydney called The Old New. Best part is you can bring in your pre-loved clothes and Amanda will give you a store credit towards your new purchases, helping the war on waste. Check out theoldnew.com.au and like them on Facebook to stay up to date with their promotions. Now, back to the show. And I think when you have, so we've talked about the decluttering, when to declutter, how to declutter, how to reduce what you bring in. Let's talk about storage for a little while. I'm a massive fan of hanging things if you have capacity because I think you can see things, you can access them, you can flick through them like you would flick through them in the shops. You can see what you have, you can categorize. So I've got like jackets, pants, singlet tops, and then tops in my wardrobe. So four different categories. And I think it's so easy. Like if you can hang it, hang it and use those really slimline hangers. Kmart have just bought in slimline hangers that are awesome. They never used to have them and they're such good quality. So if you're needing new hangers, that's a great thing to do to improve the way that your clothes sit, not have to iron them as much, make less. You know how some of those wooden hangers just take up so much space. Slimline hangers, you can fit double the amount of stuff in, not that you need extra stuff. No, but if you're moving things from drawers Correct. to you hanging up, you do need more space. Exactly. I was with a client recently. In fact, the same burning... Burning t-shirt client. Burning t-shirt client. And they had their whole wardrobe with those thick wooden hangers. And I was like, please, for the love of all your clothes, can we get thin? Yeah, spend 40 bucks. Yeah. And replace them because they take up so much room. They're they're great coat hangers. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't... And I wasn't saying let's go out and do it all now. I was saying as you purchase things. Next time you buy coat hangers. And because we got rid of lots of coat hangers, I was like, yes, please think about, if it's in your budget, think about buying slimline coat hangers. And I know that some people, I don't know, are you a fan of those flock, flocked coat Look, the, I do, I have a love-hate relationship yes, with good. flocked coat hangers. Thank you. Do you as well? Yes. Tell me why. Why do we have this relationship with them? I hate them, actually. I hate. I, I mostly hate them. Yeah, why? Because you can't easily get clothes off them. Yeah. They because, stick. Yes. Which is good for something that needs to be stuck. Correct. Good for, like, clothes that 
uh, wide neck. Yes, yes. Clothes that, so that just constantly fall slide off, over and you're like always picking it up off the but ground. But it's like the Velcro thing that happens with the flannelette sheets. sheets. <laughs> is the flocked coat hangers? It is. So sorry if you love them. I like um, semi-flocked. Okay, that's my preference, and I think the Kmart ones are the perfect level of flockingness. <laughs> So the ones that I used to recommend from the reject shop were just like two degrees too much flockedness. <laughs> and these ones are less flocked. So when you go to like grab a T-shirt, you don't end up like breaking the coat hanger and ripping the T-shirt. Or stabbing yourself in the eye with the hook. <laughs> but stuff still stays on it. Good. So that's my recommendation for our love-hate relationship with flocked, flocked If you love hangers. flocked, invest in Kmart flockness Yeah so good do you know what just thinking about coat hangers we could do a whole episode on coat hangers mm. because the amount of wire coat hangers that i have sent to landfill i just makes me feel a little bit sick i hate them it's not for great. me personally obviously for my clients but whenever i say to a client and they're like yep i'm ready to replace my coat hangers because i say these wire ones are doing nothing for your clothes this they're is what I recommend. Oh, they're, they're horrid. They're making, donate them. So I say donate them to an ironing person who does like an ironing service. Take them back to your dry cleaners or we're just going to recycle them. But it's something about every person that underestimates how many coat hangers are in their wardrobe because every single time I say to a client, go out and get some new coat hangers, they come back with too few. So now I've started saying, so when you go – grab 60 coat hangers and they'll go, I don't need 60. I go, trust me, you need 60. They come back with 40 and they're like, oh, I should have listened to you. <laughs> every single time, every single time. They, I'm just going to start keeping them in my car. That's what I'm going to do. I resolve <laughs> that I'm going to start keeping the Kmart coat hangers in my car. So when I ask people to go and buy 60 and they only buy 40, I can solve the problem right there and then. That's solved. Done. Next. Do you know what I find? Do you find this with your clients that, so they may buy too few coat hangers, but they have way too many coat hangers? What do you mean? Like, they have dodgy ones, excess coat hangers. I don't know what you mean. What? what, huh? what? As in the old ones, they have too many of the old ones? Yeah, they have too many just sitting there waiting for clothes to appear. For no. Ah. Must Never. be must be me and my clients. Never, I have. Yes, I have clients regularly that hang two or three things per hanger. I'm yes. like, what are you doing? You need to go and buy some hangers because you're never going to use that t-shirt at the bottom because you've got three on top of it. Yes, yep. I I have them too, but I also have clients with loads of clothes hangers. Right, no. Whether that's like because they're um, mid wash. Like, so they have enough clothes for all their clothes if all of their clothes were hanging, but not all Mm. their clothes are hanging. I have almost the exact number. If I only have dirty what I'm wearing, I've got the right amount of coat hangers. Uh, We have a few extras because we declutter so often. Yes, right. We don't declutter the coat hangers. No. We've decluttered the coat hangers. The coat coat hangers? We have decluttered the coat hangers. Every, like maybe once a year yep. or maybe once every two years because when we go and declutter, we're like, but we'll probably get yeah, more. That's right. We'll probably Clothes replace like that. what we've got. So, um, yes. Do you have any cool ways to, sco- to store scarves? Oh, there's so many different variations. I have them in a drawer at the moment. Um, tied up in a thing or coiled or just in the drawer? Mostly just laying in the drawer. Yep. Because I only have like six or seven. Mm-hmm. We're, we're talking we're about, talking this, at about lunch. this at lunchtime. <laughs> um, I have had a lot more than that. Yep. And so I had them in um, a tub. Okay. Yep. And I have had had them on the IKEA circles. Compliment. Thank you. And I have had them. I think that. And a variation of yeah. that. We saw in our course the other day a great way of storing scarves, and that was in those plastic um, over the door shoe, shoe hangers. hangers or jewelry hangers. And I love that idea. It too. was so good because they were effectively rolled and in, 
itch. And you could see exactly what they were because they're clear plastic. See what they are, grab them. They're not getting fluff on them from other things. They're not getting dirty. They're not getting tangled. Like it was a really clever way. And I thought, oh, I like that. The way that I do my scarves is I have a rail in my wardrobe and I just hook the scarves over so they just hang over it. Um, and I've probably got, I don't know, maybe a dozen scarves. I do love my scarves. And they hang over there really easily. I can see them, grab them, I use them regularly. And it's easy to declutter what you don't use because it kind of gets pushed to the end. Yeah. Because your favorite ones are always close up on the side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What about pants? I'm a, a hanger of my pants. Do you? Okay. Okay, what, what, what? Do you what? hang them by an end or do you fold them in half and fold hang them? Fold them in half and hang them. Oh, wrong. I know. <laughs> it is. You m- have space in your wardrobe to do that, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My yes. wardrobe's much bigger than I need. Yes. Um. So you're talking, in terms of space saving, you would hang them from the... the Cuffs or the tops. Yeah, yeah. Whatever yep. works for you. And then you don't end up with that really awkward fold in your pants. And... It takes up a whole lot less space. Yeah, half the space, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you don't end up doing that thing where you're putting two. Oh, in... I've never done that. Oh. But yes, I can imagine people So it's just could. like those T-shirts. Yeah. People do two or three oh, how annoying. folded. And so you never wear those bottom jeans no, or those ever. bottom pants because you can never be bothered. I only have one them. pair of blue jeans and one pair of black jeans. So my... You're not a pants person. You're a leggings person, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm a pants person. How do you just have one of each? Because That's I only need one of each. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? A minimalist having only one. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, really, I've got two pairs of jeans. I've got one blue and one black. Yes. I actually don't have that many either. Yeah. So you, I only wear these ones, really. They're nice. I like these ones. <laughs> um, what about jumpers? Do you have a way that you recommend for people to store their jumpers? How do you store their jumpers? Because what we, the reason I've picked scarves, pants, and jumpers is because everything else is kind of self-explanatory. Like if you've got a pair of leggings, you're probably not hanging that up in the wardrobe. You're probably putting your leggings in a drawer. And if you've got a dress, you're probably not putting it in a drawer. You're probably hanging it up. But for these things, that anything can go. So jumpers. Jumpers. We have two different ways of doing our jumpers in our wardrobe. Simon likes folding them and putting them on a shelf. Yep. And I like folding them and putting them on the shelf and hanging them up. Dependent on the jumper? Yes. Yes. So That's my really, I've got a really lovely woolen jumper, pure wool jumper mm. that gets folded. Yes. Whereas my target ones that are only going to probably last me a season or two. You can hang them. They get hung. Yeah. Only because I don't like that coat hanger. Yeah, the little diggy. pokey outie bits. Yeah. So yeah. I used to hang all my jumpers until probably only three months ago. And then I realized that I was getting the pokey outie bits, even on the coat hangers that we use. So now I've started putting them in a drawer. Yeah. And I've got so much to draw. Like we've got more space than we need in our walk-in wardrobe. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> that I am the only woman in Australia that has more room in a wardrobe than she needs. But I do. And so I went, ah, there's plenty of room. I'll just put them in a drawer that was otherwise empty. Yes. And you can see them all because you've got clear wire basket drawers rather than... Nothing gets lost. Only seeing the one And I only own two jumpers. So it's not like I've got 12 jumpers shoved in a drawer. I own two jumpers and they go in a drawer. Simple as that. Yes. Awesome. You know, have you ever worked in a job where you have a uniform? Um, I had a um, maybe w- a tucker bag. Yeah, I was. That's what I was going to say. When I worked at the milk bar, I had like a research milk bar T-shirt. <laughs> but I've never worked at a job where I like I have a uniform now. But I'm the one that made the uniform, so it's a bit different. But I love uniforms. I think they are such a smart idea. I'm a bit of a uniform person naturally. Like I like just simple T-shirts, pants slip on shoes, a scarf. Like I tend to wear an Amy uniform. Yes. And you tend to wear a Kirsty uniform. Like you kind of have a look. Yes. That makes life easier. Yes. They say that really smart people do that. I was like, to, yeah. Were you going to say that? Like yeah. Steve Jobs yes. just wears the same thing and Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yep. Yeah. Kirsty Fruger, Amy Ravel. Those amazing <laughs> people. 
So wonderful. <laughs> so that some of them, those the people less are decisions, wonderful. some of them less so wonderful. <laughs> the less decisions you have to make about what to wear in the morning, partly because you've got those clothes, and partly because you kind of know your look and your feel, can make a big difference to how a wardrobe functions. And I totally recommend personal stylists. Like I love them because they can really help you figure out what your look is yes, and what your style is, what works for you, what flatters you, what works for your season in life. Like we are different to who we were five years ago. Yeah, I never would have been wearing a long necklace and a scarf five years ago because somebody would have pulled it off or somebody would have had it in their mouth. Yes. But nowadays, pretty lucky that my kids don't chew on my necklaces. It's a good thing that 10 and 12 year olds don't chew on your necklace, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah, Jesse, good on you. Good, good job, boys. You've outgrown that. <laughs> so it is, I think that it, they can be really well worth your investment. Yep. Um, however, I've personally used one. You've used one, I'm guessing, by the fact that you're loving them. And I use one as well because it makes sense. Yes. It, it makes it easy to go into a shop and know what to buy and what to just not buy. Yeah, correct. And go, actually, that's on sale, but it's totally not my colours. Yeah, it's, it's not, not my, my style. style. Mm -hmm. It makes it really easy to say no to things. So while we're talking about clothing, I would really encourage you to ask some questions while you're out shopping. So ask, like, why am I out shopping? What is it that's taken me to the shops? And then when you see something you want to buy, is it pra am I there for a practical reason? Am I there because um, I had black pants, the dog ate a hole in them, and I need new black pants? Or are you there emotionally? Have you just had a fight with your partner? Or have you had a wonderful day at work? Either of those reasons, whether it be happiness or sadness, frustration, anger, be really mindful when you go to the shops, when you're in when you're just going to shops for going to shop's sake rather than for a purpose because we can often walk away from shops with something in our hands and something less in our bank accounts without necessarily <laughs> intending it yes when we go to the shops for an emotional reason so we would recommend that you be more intentional and thoughtful about whether or not you do need to go to the shops bit of self-awareness yes why am I going to the shops do I actually need to be going to the shops could I do something more practical with my time or more um, beneficial to my hip pocket and more beneficial to my life do I need to go for a walk instead or do I need to sit down with a cup of coffee and a book or a glass of wine and a book <laughs> No. So there's some really good tips and tricks, hopefully, for you to um, declutter and organize your clothes. So we want you to think about making sure that when you bring items in, which you're naturally going to do, that you either do a declutter category by category or you bring one in and take one out. There are no rules unless you want there to be. So if you want to make a six-month or 12-month rule, go for it, put it in your diary and work around that. Make sure that if you put something on and you don't like what it looks like, you send it off to the op shop. Let it go, my peeps. Let it go. Or if you put it on and you realize that it's spoiled, ruined, cut, broken. Mothball eaten. It's probably not lamp. the mothballs that are actually eating it, is it? It's the moths. <laughs> Moth. Lamp burnt. Put that one in the bin. Straight in the bin. Yep. Yep. And then when you're coming to your storage, think about what do I want to hang? What do I want to fold? How can I get creative? What can my scarves look like when they hang? What about my jumpers? What about my pants? What about my leggings? What, where do the jackets live? Where do the winter coats live? And think about that so that it can make sense in your wardrobe. We hope that we've given you a few tips and tricks to declutter and organize your clothing today. And we can't wait to engage with you over on Facebook this week. We can't wait to see um, what creative ideas you have for storing in your wardrobe. We can't wait to hear about the intentionality you bring to your next shopping trip. And we can't wait to hang out with you there and everywhere else that you'll find us. Yeah, so don't forget too that if you love what you hear on our podcast, we'd love you to pop over to patreon.com 
forward slash the art of decluttering and become a supporter with us. So come alongside us. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. And that helps us to produce. We hire the studio. We have a sound engineer. And it helps us to get these awesome podcasts out to you. And it warms our hearts to have you guys show your support in that way. Yes. We love you guys no matter how you support us, no matter what you do. We love bringing these podcasts to you and we can't wait to do it again next week. Have a good week. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, do a friend a favor and share this episode so they too can learn the art of decluttering. You can find me, Amy, over at simplyorganized.net or on Facebook as Simply Organized PO. You can find me, Kirsty, over at feelslikehome.net.au or on Facebook as Feels Like Home PO. Don't forget, you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you love what you hear, we'd really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes. We hope you've enjoyed listening and that you've learned some tips to help you declutter and keep your home organized. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the freedom.